All right, guys, we've come out just 20 minutes by car from Mestia, maybe 30 minutes in the snow, but to a place called Guest House Latali. And yes, it's a guest house, but we're here for a cooking lesson, cooking some Georgian food, some local Svenetian food with the, the mother of the household. She's going to teach us how to cook kubdari. She's going to teach us, teach us how to cook kachapuri, and then we're going to have a little feast, a little Georgian feast after it. I cannot wait, but... Oh my, I cannot say any more times how stunning this place is. Of course, we've come just outside, but look at that. Still, we have the mountains covered in snow behind us. And uh, yeah, a little bit chilly. So let's go check out the cooking class. All right, I must admit, I don't think she normally cooks for this many people. It was a bit of a challenge to have about 30 people huddled inside this little, well, shed, I guess. But nevertheless, it was fascinating. I love watching people cook, you know that. And yeah, she made three or four local dishes from this region, obviously very, very traditional Georgian dishes, but dishes which are very specific to the mountains and this area. And yeah, despite the awkwardness, it was an absolute pleasure to watch her cook. First up, she made the kubdari, which is a bread dough filled with a seasoned and spiced, with local spices, meat. That's then wrapped around the meat, or the dough is wrapped around the meat, flattened out, as you can see now, flattens it out into this like pancake style, and then it's cooked on the hot plate. It is one of my favorite dishes here in Georgia, and yeah, this one was pretty special. After that, it was onto the cheese, and a little cornbread dumpling, I would say, with a lot of cheese fried in butter. Now, you just know that's going to taste good, of course. And then, <laughs> and then, just look how much cheese goes into this cornmeal. It is unbelievable. You can see why I say the food is rich up here, but, I mean, when you're in the snow, you kind of need it. And because there's so much cheese in this, look how it goes when they stir it up. Anyway, let's head inside. So yeah, we saw her preparing the food, but of course we're not going to eat outside in a little shack. So we're going to eat in the house, in the living room of this wonderful family, of this little guest house as well. It is a little guest house. All the food, you can see, once again, you never, you will never go hungry in Georgia. But I thought I'd just sneak in before everyone else comes in and it turns into a little bit of chaos and show you around. All of the food, plus more that we saw being cooked, is on the table. But this is special. Don't just get access to the lounge get access to their kitchen as well. Look at this, this is how the Georgian people live. Oh, and this is the oven, you've got the kubdari inside, you've got the fire on the left. You don't want to get too close because it is hot. And even on top, all the heat comes through and that's where they'll, they'll cook their pots. But look at the family setting in here. <laughs> got a majomba. <laughs> Everyone's waving inside, but how cool is this inside? A little Georgian Spinetti kitchen. And for as cold as it is outside, snow all over the trees, in here is toasty warm. This, this is where you want to be. And you want to know the reason why we have the wood fire? It's because there's no electricity here. Electricity is, well, they do have electricity in the village, but right now electricity is cut off. So everything is with the fire, with the candle or, or whatever else. But the taste of real life up in the mountains, we are remote, we are, not quite cut off, but it's not the easiest place to get to, but I tell you guys, it's worth it when you do. And I am starving. I have not eaten today. I've been fasting, so the prospect of this food, I cannot wait. So as the cooking class finished, everyone started to head inside, take their spaces at the table. A supra, traditional Georgian feast. The toast started to begin. The alcohol started to flow. Everyone started drinking, basically. And that's the point in this, but we had something a little special. All right, just slipped away from the big... Oh, carry on, carry on, it's okay. <laughs> the microphone is here, it's okay, it's okay. Okay, <laughs> just started filming and started talking and it all turned around thinking, oh, what's this guy saying? Anyway, as I was just saying, or trying to say, I just slipped away from the, the big feast. I mean, Georgian hospitality is to eat together, drink together, but it doesn't make for a good video. So they very kindly, as I said, let me into the kitchen where I'm going to just taste the food and show you a bit of the food very quickly. But the benefit of that, other than just seeing them cook earlier, they're now preparing the fruit. You can see cutting it all up. So I'm right in the thick of the action here. I've got a little bit of everything. I've got the kachapuri, one with the millet, which I think will be super interesting. I've got the kubdari, the beef-filled one, and this, 
This is salata. Just carrot. Salata. Salata. Okay. Salata. Salata. Chistuari. 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 Sateni. Sateni. Shusha. 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 Cheese. Quelli. <laughs> Quelli. Sulguni. Sulguni. Okay. Well. That's the expert telling me. How many do you think I'm going to remember? Let's stop talking about it and let's try it. I cannot wait. Proper family cooked food, you cannot beat that. And they're so loving, they're so kind, they're so friendly. If this is a guest house, as I said, I'd be tempted to stay. This is, uh, you know, having filmed street food, I've eaten in a few awkward places. Don't know if it gets more awkward than this, sat at the kitchen table, everyone around me, I'm sat on a little sofa chair, a table too high for me, but I have this plate, as you saw, I have this plate of incredible food, so I can't really complain, but I don't really know where to start. Maybe I'm going to start with something I know I love, which is the kubdari, the, the bread filled with meat. You can just see, i get that on there for you. You can just see the meat, the beef. You saw her fill it. It was chunks of beef on the inside with the spices and the onion. Let's try it. Wow, that kumdari is amazing. Now, obviously, they prep for quite a lot of people, so it's not as crisp on the outside as it normally is. It's cooked on that hot plate, and of course, the bread goes crisp. It goes crunchy on the outside. It's softened a little bit as it's cooled down. That's you know that's understandable. But the inside, oh my God, the flavour of that beef, the spice that comes through straight away, but it is good quality beef, and then you get the spice, and the warming spice. There's paprika in there, there's a bit of chili powder in there. You can feel it, it is a touch spicy, but then those unique Svenetian flavors, the coriander as well, comes through. That, that is special. All right, carrot salad. Mm. Surprisingly fresh, carrot, cabbage, pepper, dill, didn't expect to get dill in there, but all of the food here, all of the food is grown in the area. It's biological, it's eco. There's no pesticides, there's no nothing. It comes from around here, sorry. I'm in the way, guys. Always in the way. <laughs> yeah, it's from around here and you can taste that. You can feel that it's doing good for you when you eat it. Didn't expect to have a nice light salad like that to mix up all of this because, let's face it guys, we're up in the mountains. We're around the snow, especially in winter, it's harsh, it's difficult. A lot of cheese, a lot of bread, you know, the calories, the, the rich food that you want in this weather. These are hard-working people outside a lot of the time. So the, the cuisine here reflects that. But uh, yeah, salad is also delicious. Their cheese is so good in the mountains. Oh my God. Shulguni. Oh, that is good. That is good. And then, therefore, you can tell why these cheese meals are so good. You have potato, and you saw how much cheese she put into those potatoes, and then just mashed it and mashed it and mashed it until it had all become one. And then she lifts it up from the pot. And you, you wouldn't think it was mashed potato at that point. You think it was sticky cheese, but wow, let's see. Come on. The flavor. Not only do these guys know how to eat, these guys know how to cook. All right, this one. What was the name of this one? Chishduari. Chishduari, which is the cornmeal or the corn flour, not cornmeal, it's corn flour and cheese mixed together again. Set, or well, you saw her making it in her hands actually, it's not set, it's just, the, it's just the, the texture of it. And then she puts it in the frying pan with a little bit of butter or oil and cooks it out. And you can see just how golden that has gone on the outside. That's the cheese and the oil. It's gone golden and crispy on the inside. You're meant to eat it with a knife and fork, I'm sure, but for me it looks like a croquetta, so I pick it up. <laughs> now I'm being filmed, look. <laughs> being filmed on the camera whilst I film. I don't know how often this has happened here, so... Anyway, let's try this one. Tishduari. Tishduari. I'm never going to get this, guys. Georgian language is difficult. <laughs> mm. Again, that cheese, cheesiness straight away, but it's soft on the inside. Of course, that cheese is melted on the inside, it's warm. <laughs> the saltiness comes through that cheese, and then the crunch and the golden, the umami goldenness on the outside. The crunch from the outside, the, 
savouriness from where it's golden and crisp against the pan. It's so good. This is the, well, this is actually called dari. But this is the kachapuri, the one I've saved until last. And I thought I'd save it until last, but it's super interesting with the millet. But they were just telling me here that normally you don't cut, up, cut it up into a slice like this. Normally, one person gets one kachapuri and one kubdari. Ridiculous. Anyway, this one, as I said, is filled with millet. Haven't seen that before, so pretty unique and apparently unique to spinetti in this region. Mm. I'm not sure how much flavor the millet brings to it, but it's probably actually about making it more hearty and filling you up more. I mean, of course, it's bread and cheese, but you know, you want something that's going to fill you up, keep you full all day. This is definitely going to do that. I think they're probably having fun out there, toasting each other, sat together eating, but if I had the choice, I know where I'd rather be, in here with the family. They're drinking, cheersing each other, thinking, why is this guy in our lounge? But uh, they're lucky people living out here, beautiful place, amazing food, and you really can taste the love that is put into this food. Sure, you can go to a restaurant, I'm sure they're great, but you will not beat eating with a family. And hospitality is amazing throughout Georgia. But if you come to the mountains, I think it's just that little level above, you know, the community spirit between people, the love between people. And you definitely feel that in the food and in the culture up in the mountains. Happy boy. The party is in full flow inside. I thought I'd come out and just round that up with you guys. The meal was delicious. I think, I think you got the sense of that, but I must admit, it was a special occasion to be inside with the family and I didn't get it on camera because I don't think it's, well, sometimes I just like experiences for myself, if you know what I mean. But the guy, the, the head of the household, let's say, he started toasting me in Georgian and then one of the sons translated for me and then I toasted him back and we went back and forth a little bit on the toasting, but just a really unique and special experience. Things that, sure, you can go to the big cities and you can go to the super touristy places, but you're just not going to get experiences like that. And I'm gonna remember that for a long time. And that's why I recommend you come out to these places like this and experience what the life really is like. Mm -hmm.